Here we go again. Ready to do another episode. So, let's get started. G'day awesome people, welcome to episode 147 of the Transmit Podcast. My name is Tim Egg, and as always, if you have any questions you'd like answered on the show, jump on the website, trainsmove.com. On the home page, there's a little submit your questions, fill in that, and uh, we'll get it going. So today's question comes from Steve. Now, Steve's actually sent in a few different questions for the show, so God bless him. I do like your questions, so definitely keep them coming, because especially if you've got multiple questions, we start seeing a little picture, and we can start almost following the athlete's journey as we're going along. So it's, I, I like it. So today's question is, on my swims, should I be swimming 1 to 1.3 miles every time, or should I go about, or should, how should I go about my swim? I swim 1.3 miles today, and want to know if I should be doing that three, two to three times a week. So that's a pretty cool question. Now, to add some more content into this, um, Steve's training for 70.3. So I'll, I'm, like, I'm getting better with miles. I'm bloody being an Aussie. I, everything's kilometers for me. So I, I've always got to refer back to the oh, right. What's that? Well, it's 1.6 Ks. And so, so I've always got to convert it in my head. I was mucking around, just on a bit of a side note here, I was mucking around with my Garmin. I, I set it up for miles so, so I can try and get a better understanding. And, geez, it did my head in. I'd be running at a certain amount of miles per hour and then i have hit this amount of miles. And I spent the entire run trying to convert it back to kilometres in my head. So, yeah. <laughs> And I, and I feel sorry for some of the athletes I coach because uh, not not everything, but if I a lot of what I coach is time based. But if I'm doing distance, not every, I'll sometimes do miles, but sometimes I'll do kilometres. And it must stuff with them, though, especially the ones from the US I coach. But anyway, um, so around around two k's ish per 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 swim session. I personally. <laughs> Uh, I go back to it depends on your available training hours. See, if if you start tracking about going back through all my episodes, you start seeing a bit of a trend. It's what are your available training hours that 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 bit, that starts popping its head up throughout the um, episodes of, of one of many uh, one of many things that it keeps popping up. But one thing is you got to work out what's your available training hours. Now, you see these coaches that go, oh, when I get an athlete, I like them to write down what hours they work. And then I'm preparing food for work. And then how many hours of sleep do you get? And then how many to hours, you know, travelling to for, to school and back? How, what times? That's You're wasting everyone's time with that. You get, get a blank piece of paper, right, you know, Monday to Sunday on top, and then just write your available training hours on that piece of paper. You know, you go, well, Monday I, I can do this, and then Tuesday I've got two hours after, you know, one o'clock, and then Wednesday. You, you, start, you write down your available training hours, and you can go from there. Personally, I don't see the point of going to the pool unless you can swim at minimum 1,500 metres. Um, so I guess one mile <laughs> or thereabouts. But aiming for two kilometres, two thousand metres, that that would I'd be aiming for that every time, and I'd be looking and how to structure it. Well, that depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, the, so, for for instance, you might want to do one, one more aerobic set. So you might do five four hundreds, for instance, and then your next swim session might be um, five hundred metre warm up. 20 times 25 metre sets, leaving with five seconds rest, 10 times 50 with 10 seconds rest, and five times 100 with 15 seconds rest. And your third set might be, and my athletes love this session. Well, I I love this session. Um, Alan Pittman killed me with this session. He got me to do it hundreds of times. Where it's a 2K set, and you do two rounds of 200 metre freestyle, 200 metre pull, 200 metre pull and paddle, 200 meter pull paddle band, 200 meters of 12 meter kick, 12 meter freestyle, and you do obviously that twice twice through. It's a great set. It kind of targets just about everything. 
Um, I'd also be saying in your set, probably your, let's have a think here, in your aerobic set, your four times, your five times 400, every six or so strokes, I'd look up, see, see where you're going, and head back down and continue swimming. So I'd be um, practicing open water swimming in that session. And I'll be also looking at starting each set. If your swim, if your race has a deep water start, I'd be starting every swim session in the deep end of the pool and not kicking off the water, not kicking off the wall. I'd be just just hovering and then go on each set. Uh, in particular, that set. If you're going to replace any of these sessions if with actual open water swimming, I'd be replacing you um, five times four hundred, and that and you might do that do that particular block as a, I just get those three sessions um, over a four week period, and then you you change it. Now, answer your question: Should you be going two to three times a week, depending on your available training hours? Let three's better than two, two's better than one. So I'd be Try, aim if you're really trying to get there three times a week if you're not taking anything away from your bike and your run. If you've got to take anything away from them, I'd back it off to two times a week. Um, unless you were, if you were like, a, a, you know, an elite swimmer at high school, for instance, and you still still got a fair bit of speed, you've got the luxury of choosing whether you want to go once a week. I've got one athlete who did very well as a swimmer as a kid. She's um, only under the pool once a week. I would love for her to go more, but she's got a family, she's got a you know, husband that works. But it's, it's, it's a very busy lifestyle for her. So she, But she's got the luxury of only needing to go to the pool once. She's the only athlete that I coach that can do that. So that's just a little bit more content. But I'd be definitely playing around with your swim sessions, but have a, have a reason, have a purpose for it. So I did give you those sessions too with no technique work. I just gave you some good examples. If, you're, if you've are if you got a weakness somewhere, I'd be, as part of your warm-up, I'd be throwing in technique work. Some, um, it depends what your weakness is. But I, I recently wrote a blog, actually, on on the trainsmove.com on the, like the five best drills most triathletes could really benefit using and and I even added on the bottom of the blog warm ups you can add the sessions to so trainsmove.com click on blog and it'd be like two or three blogs down or so I only wrote it like a week or so ago worth having a look if you guys got any other questions. Jump on the website, trainsmove.com. Shoot me an email, tim at trainsmove.com. Till tomorrow. Hey, Ray. We're done. You keep classy, YouTube.